Good morning, good afternoon, uh, uh, good evening, depending on where in the world you might be dialing in from today. Uh, welcome. Uh, so my name is Ivan Casanova. Uh, I'm the Senior Vice President of Product and Marketing here at Jive. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a background on myself before we jump in here. Uh, I, I, I love um, talking about and, and helping enterprise organizations adopt new technology. It's kind of what I've dedicated my career to um, in a whole bunch of different formats. Um, and I, I, if you are so inclined and you want to, uh, you know, follow along on Twitter, um, the hashtag that we're following for this particular um, uh, session on Twitter is job chat. Uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, uh, Twitter's probably a pretty good way to do that, and you can get me at it's me Ivan. And uh, there's always an ongoing, interesting conversation that we're having with folks on on Twitter as as we do these things. Uh, uh, Jive is a software company. We're based in New York City. Our focus as an organization is bringing consumer level candidate experience to corporate career sites. That's what we really care about. Uh, you know, we think that for a lot of organizations out there that the career site user experience, candidate experience can be a lot better. The people who are your job candidates, their expectations level, um, because they are citizens of the internet, is that it should be awesome at all times, um, including when they're on a mobile device. And that's our mission as a company. So uh, enough about me and enough about our company. We're going to start now. And today's topic is going to be how to overcome the limits of your applicant tracking system uh, with a specific focus on how to do mobile with your existing applicant tracking system. And we will take about 25 minutes of time to go through the materials. Uh, you know, we would love if you asked us some questions as we go along. We think the best presentations are the ones where you guys out there uh, ask us some questions. Um, you can use the WebEx application and send it right to us. And at the end of the 25 minutes, we'll take a look at all the questions and we will, uh, and we'll go through them all at that point. Um, so thank you for being on time and we're gonna get going. So. I'm going to start with a question today, which is a little different than maybe the way we've done some of the previous uh, of this series. But I'm going to ask a question, which is, who out there in the recruiting world and talent acquisition loves their applicant tracking system? Um, and, you know, I, I find that um, I ask that question a lot, and, you know, nine times out of ten, uh, the answer is that they do not love their applicant tracking system. And I think that uh, you know, we did a survey uh, at the end of last year that talked about uh, applicant tracking system adoption, and what we found was really unbelievable, right? There's two-thirds of the HR professionals that we surveyed expressed significant dissatisfaction with their ATS. It was like this core system um, in the whole HR talent acquisition and recruiting space, and two-thirds of people didn't like them and had some serious reservations about their applicant tracking system. And the answers as to why ranged from things like it was really difficult to me to get data and analytics out of it, it was slow and it slowed me down, it's old and it doesn't really work well with a bunch of other things that I want to do, or it just is really complicated and an awkward technology. But by far, you know, one of the most important and highly cited answers was that support for mobile is terrible. And that's what we're really going to focus on in today's presentation. Because, you know, for, for the folks here at Jive, and I think for many of you out there, Mobile is a really, really important part of um, the world today. Uh, I just recently got off a of vacation with four teenagers, um, and we were at a Caribbean island with no internet service, no uh, cell service, and to watch four teenagers have complete withdrawal from their mobile phones was a frightening and terrifying experience. We were very happy at one point to get back into the United States where, we, where, they, could, where they could post their Instagram pictures in real time. Um, but for our industry, I think that's very similar uh, case is true. Uh, only 
25% of the enterprises that we have surveyed, and we do the survey every single year, this number has actually not gotten significantly better in the last two years, said that they started optimizing candidate experience for mobile. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about how mobile is really, really important. So today's job seeker fundamentally believes that they should be able to do most, if not all, of their job search from their mobile device. Our research shows 80% of job seekers expect to be able to do part of their job search easily on a mobile phone, and the majority of that, 70%, believe they should be able to do the entire process straight through to the apply process on a mobile phone. Yet, three quarters of the HR professionals that we surveyed know that mobile is important, understand, admit that mobile is important, but only a small percentage, around 25%, have actually done anything about that. So, we have an industry where the core system has become the bottleneck, right? And so, I guess my second question after, do you love your ATS, which I think most people would answer no, the next question I have is, how did we get here? Like, how did this become this bottleneck for our industry? And, and what are we going to do about it? So, I, I think that how we got here is a relatively simple answer. Uh, but I think it gives us great context to the challenges we face as an industry. You know, the applicant tracking system is, at its core, a back office system. Inherently, it is a system of record. And, you know, I think that when we think about back office software, we kind of get what we think that would be, right? It's probably pretty good at things like, sorry, it's probably pretty good at workflow. It's probably pretty good at managing resumes. It's probably pretty good at process-oriented tasks, like onboarding a new employee. And systems of record intentionally are meant to store information. That's what they were designed to do. And system of record architecture, system of record technology approach is at the core of the folks who have built your applicant tracking system. And I just want to make sure that we, in the, in the next you know, 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to talk about how different that is from a system of engagement. Facebook is a system of engagement. Amazon is a system of engagement. Twitter is a system of engagement. They are designed for consumers and individuals to engage with people, with each other, with the organization, to get stuff done. And that's not what the ATS was actually ever designed to do. So, number one, if you really do want to overcome the limitations of your current applicant tracking system, and you want to start to do some mobile recruiting, step one, without question, is to treat recruiting like a system of engagement and stop trying to use a system of record to do that. So, recruiting needs to be a system of engagement. What does that mean, right? Well, first and foremost, right, what it means is, is that the mobile device is the ultimate system of engagement platform. And what I mean by that is yeah, there has never been a technology in the history of mankind that has been so personal, right? We customize our screens on our mobile phones. We diligently think about the order of the apps on the home screen. We wrap them in cases because, God forbid, we break them and we drop them and the glass shatters um, and you would be without a mobile phone. Or, God forbid, you go to a remote Caribbean island and there's no cell service and you can't use your mobile. Right? This is, these are very personal devices. And what that really means, right, is, is that that personal device is the ideal platform for people to apply for jobs. Because applying for a job is a really personal, personal exercise, especially if you already have one. 
right, and you're the canonical passive candidate, applying for a job is a really personal thing, right? And that's why the mobile phone is the perfect platform to actually do that on, but it's the platform that we actually haven't optimized our systems for. Which is an interesting parallel. And lest anybody think that this is not a pervasive problem, this is a statistic that I talk about all the time. One, so the Pew Internet Research, this is not our statistic, this is the Pew Internet Research guys. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you haven't been to their site, I, I strongly recommend it. They do an incredible job engaging the usage patterns and adoption rates of Internet technologies. Um, they look at social demographic information. They look at platform, mobile, desktop information. It's really great. This year they came up with a great stat that said, one-third of all the people in the U.S. who access the Internet only access that on a mobile device. Now, that means that one-third of your entire candidate pool is on mobile. One of our clients um, is General Parts, uh, the trucking retailer, and they recently gave a presentation at a retail conference. Um, their AutoZone and Napa Auto Parts and things like that. And it was just such obvious quote that said, you know, we hire a lot of truckers because they move a lot of goods around, and universally truckers are on mobile. And I can see, like, nobody has a laptop in the back of a semi, but everybody has a laptop, I mean, has a mobile phone in the back of that semi, right? And this notion of mobile is pervasive in every part of our internet world, right? More people open email on a mobile device than on a desktop. More people go on social media on a mobile device than on a desktop. And now, for the first time ever, there are vertical markets like media where more people are buying stuff online on mobile, right? And our whole world in talent acquisition is centered around the internet, right? And the internet is now moved to the center mass around mobile computing. So, you know, our, 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 our candidates are on mobile, the candidate experience is so focused on mobile, the ATSs don't support mobile very well because this is out of the box, ATS, applicant tracking system, apply flow on mobile. This is literally a screen cam, screen grab that I did from my phone for an existing application. And if you are using out of the box apply flow from your ATS, this is what the candidate experience actually is. Would you apply for this job? Because I don't think I would. No matter how bad I wanted it, I don't think I could. Right? That's the real killer. It's not even that if I wanted to, I couldn't. It wasn't designed for me as a mobile person who uses my mobile phone as my primary computing device to actually do this. And what we're going to talk about now is why the applicant tracking system was never designed to do this, why candidates actually can't apply from jobs for their mobile phone, and what we're actually doing this. Because folks, I think we need a transformation of HR technology to a mobile focus, mobile first, just like the rest of the internet. And I think step one for everybody is showing up at this webinar, so I'm happy that you're here. So first off, okay, I think that after you take out your mobile phone and actually try to apply for a job on your career site with your mobile phone, um, that'll be an eye-opening experience for a lot of folks. The next thing I want you to do is think about how many people are actually going to your career site today on mobile. Um, you can go to your web guys, you can go to your marketing department, and they have these statistics readily available, uh, and start to baseline and measure based on platform, 
how many people are actually coming into your organization through mobile? How many people are actually applying to jobs through mobile? How many people are actually getting hired on mobile? And I bet it will be an eye-opener just to look at the initial set of numbers. So set a baseline. Test your process and take out your phone right now and apply for a job. Uh, if you want to compare it to something, you can go to job.com slash experience, and we've actually built the most beautiful consumer level user experience for a mobile job application. And you can actually, if you do it from a mobile phone, uh, you can actually experience exactly what it's like to apply from a job from mobile uh, with a beautiful candidate experience, and it's, uh, it's really awesome. So test your own and then see how good your own can be, and that'll give you a good baseline for how much work you need to do. And I want you to think about not every step of the way in that candidate experience, right? Because candidate experience on a mobile device starts with search. Your candidates are either searching for a job on Google or some other search engine. I don't want to be, I don't want to support anybody I don't, no, don't need to. Or they're coming directly to your career site and searching for a job. Search has gone mobile. Google will tell you that 50% of organic search is now occurring on a mobile device. Right? And Google is by far one of the most popular applications on every single platform of mobile. So, if you want to make search better, you need to think about three things. One is mobile SEO. So this last week, we published a really interesting blog post on the Jive blog, jive.com slash blog, and about April 21st being what Google is calling mobile get it. Google will actually be deprecating websites that do not support mobile in their search algorithm, which means that if you don't have a mobile optimized site on your career site, your site will appear lower in the organic search rankings. Terrible. Right? So make sure that it's SEO optimized. Make sure it's mobile SEO optimized. And make sure that the experience when they actually find a job through that search, the landing pages, is mobile optimized as well. Because everything needs to work the same. So it's really interesting, like I get a lot of folks who ask me, hey Ivan, what does that mean to be mobile optimized? Mobile optimized to me, and I think to where we see the clients that we work with and the kind of state of the art best practice for mobile in the industry is what we basically call responsive design. When we build stuff on Jive.com, when we build anything for our clients, it's actually one web page that changes depending on what machine, what platform you happen to be viewing this website, this web page on. Which means that for a big screen monitor, you get a certain view of the world. For a smaller screen, like a mobile device or a tablet, you get a different representation of the page. And modern website today, <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry, I apologize. Um, all of the navigation, the panning, the resizing, the scrolling, all of that stuff changes from depending on how big your screen is. And also, what's interesting is that even the size of the images, when you go to a mobile device and you view a web page, it actually serves up lower resolution images to accommodate the smaller screen and the assumed lower connectivity bandwidth. So responsive design is what you should be asking for from your career site, from your landing pages, et cetera. And I say this all the time, really, the, so number one is think about SEO, think about search, but also think about where is the weakest link in the mobile chain, right? Because it's 
Really simple, folks. If you have a non-mobile optimized part of the process, your candidates will leave. We work with 40 to 50 of the biggest companies in the world on mobile optimizing their recruiting flow and their application process. And there is one universal truth from every single customer is as soon as a mobile optimized part of the process is served up to the candidate online, they're gone. They're gone. And their conversion rates on mobile before they work with Jive are zero, and their conversion rates on mobile with their work with Jive are significantly higher. And for us, and I think for all the clients that we work with, the rubber really meets the road at the apply flow. You know, what's interesting is that I say this all the time, is like, you spent all this money to get them there. You've optimized your mobile, you've optimized for SEO so that they show up well in a Google search ranking. You've spent money on Indeed and LinkedIn and career builders and Monster to advertise your jobs. You've posted your jobs on social media. You have crafted the perfect job description. You have gotten somebody to press the button to say apply now. And if you don't support mobile in your apply flow, it is the equivalent of Amazon saying, great, thanks for interest in my product, but now go to your computer to buy it, right? I, I just bought a GoPro camera and I bought this mount on Amazon from my iPad. And they say, great, buy this mount, Ivan, we love you and we want you back. And they don't say, now go to a PC. And if you don't have a mobile optimized apply flow, this is the equivalent of what it is that you're doing. And natively, only 10% of, of all applications actually get completed. And this is kind of a dirty little secret of the industry, right? Only 10% of job applications that are started actually get completed. And by mobile optimizing your job applications, what we're finding is, is that customers that we work with are now improving that by a factor of three. So, if you are at 10%, you're at 30%. If you're at 8, you're up to 25. If you're at 15 or 16, you're getting close to 50%. We have a client who we've been working with for a number of years on optimizing their mobile apply and really thinking about what the best practices are. We have them at 82%. Think about that, folks. More than 8 out of 10 candidates who start an online job application on a mobile device with them is actually completing that job application. It's tremendous. And you can do just as well because you just need to stop using this out-of-the-box ATS mobile apply and move to a better platform. And that better platform should have a couple things in it that are really relevant. One is branding. Um, I think this is so important. The, every client that I go visit now more and more, the conversation has turned to one about brand. And I think that job applications is the only online experience where we feel like it's okay to change the branding in the middle of the process. Right, so I, I get to my career site, I forget about whether it's mobile or desktop, doesn't really matter, right? I get to my career site, I look at the company description and the pretty pictures on the career site, and it's all branded by my marketing department, and then I, I find the job that's just right for me, that has the right qualifications in my local territory, one that I really am excited to apply for. I hit apply, and all of a sudden I'm presented with some other branding, some vendor branding. H how in the world is that acceptable? It's the only business process where we online that, that would actually be okay, right? So think about how do I, every single time I touch a candidate, how can I make sure that I've extended my brand out to them? And then you need to think through some of what I call the little details, right? And I don't mean little in the sense of screen size. I mean your ATS 
presumes a desktop user experience. And I think this is the key takeaway maybe for this whole presentation, right? Your ATS assumes a desktop experience. What I mean by that is they assume that you have a keyboard and a mouse and a local storage where I've stored my hard drive, or local storage where I've stored my resume. And as we all know, mobile phones don't have local storage. So what we've done is we've thought about, hey, what are the ways that I can enable a mobile job seeker to satisfy the requirements of an application process, all those little details. And one of them that just, I just love, because it's so innovative and it's really just kind of brilliant, is we've given folks a bunch of choices. Well, A, if I, I can use my LinkedIn profile as a resume. And what I mean by that is I can authenticate the user through LinkedIn, and I actually create a PDF version of their LinkedIn profile that we create for them, and then we attach that to the, to the application. Maybe I've got my resume stored on one of my cloud drives, like Dropbox or Google Drive or, or OneDrive for Microsoft. And if that's not even an option, what we do is we actually allow you to complete the application process and come back to the resume upload, which is something that a lot of applicant tracking systems don't support. So what we do is if you choose the email option, what we'll do is we'll send you an email address and then we will then, when you reply with your resume attached to that email, we will then sync up that email with your application so that your application goes back to the ATS with the, the resume attached, right? So we have thought through the little details of how a mobile job seeker is actually going to attach their resume. They don't have local storage. And your ATS doesn't think like that. And yes, we provide analytics, and I think analytics are really important, but what we find is getting into the granular details of where clients are dropping out on mobile then is a, a really interesting place for us to apply our analytics. And so analytics become a really big part. I talked earlier about measuring everything and setting a baseline. This is where you start to see how those, move, how those metrics move, right, through the analytics. Now, uh, hopefully I have frightened you to death about your mobile process and talked a little bit about some of the best practices that are out there in the industry um, and some of the clients that we work with. I, I'd like to just close with why I think this is so important, why I, you, you can probably hear in my voice how excited I get about this topic. Um, a third of the people out there that we surveyed who have a terrible experience are going to go on social media and tell their friends. They're going to post, I just tried to apply to a job at company XYZ and it was awful. Don't apply there. And that may be the best case scenario because I think the worst case scenario is they're more likely to spend less money with your company. This is really a brand issue more than an applicant flow issue. Um, and this is why, you know, we're so passionate about the candidate experience on top of your existing ATS and how to make that better. So your ATS is not a recruiting platform. Recruiting requires a system of record, a system of engagement, not a system of record. Think about end-to-end -end mobile Mobile apply where the rubber meets the road. I would add one that I didn't write down when I built this presentation yesterday, which was, and you can do this today on your existing ATS, okay? And hopefully data will guide your every effort. Okay, so I said it would be about 25 minutes. I think I actually did it in about 28 or 29 minutes, so I apologize for running a little bit long. Um, could we now, I'm going to go over and swing over here and take a look at some questions that we got. So, um, the first question that we got, which is a great question, thank you very much, is why have so many why have so many, why have most ATSs been slow to move to mobile? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think that um, you know, I, 
I think they're big back office ERP vendors are the, are the, are the majority of the vendors. I, I think they don't think in terms of system of engagement. I think they, turn, I think, they think in terms of system of record. Uh, we're starting to see some movement there, uh, but I don't think that they have the passion for consumer level candidate experience um, that some other companies do like us. Um, I think it's a DNA issue more than anything else. I think it's a perspective on how they view the world and how they view the industry, and um, you know more than more than anything else. What are some outcomes for companies that are not mobile ready? Uh, well, I, I think outcomes uh, number one would be you're going to get less candidates. You're going to have less qualified candidates. I think your your passive. Um, Candidates is going to be significantly lower. Um, I think that uh, uh, people are going to move on if they can't apply for mobile devices. And I think ultimately, it's, like I said, it's a brand issue. I think people will think that you're technology backwards, right? And I think that's the worst thing that could possibly happen to you is that you get viewed as a as a backwards-looking um, technology brand. Uh, what recommendations do you have for a company that is looking to become mobile optimized? Yeah, that's a great question. I get this a lot. Um, I, I, I go, I, I'm lucky enough to be in the job that I have, uh, that I get to go visit a lot of customers, and I love to do things like we're doing today where I get to just talk uh, to clients and uh, one-to-many, but I, I also love the one-to-one -one model. Um, it's interesting. When I do the one-to-one -one model, the number one question I get is, what can I do today? Right? You know, what can I do to get started? And I, I, I say this with all of the sincerity that I possibly can is take out your phone and try your own process. Go to jive.com slash experience and try our rarefied, beautiful, awesome consumer level experience and see, and, and then really just set that baseline uh, for what the difference is. The next question, which is, what is the most important aspect of mobile that a recruiter should know about? Uh, the most important aspect of mobile that a recruiter should know about is that that's probably where your passive candidates are going to be engaged. That elusive, golden passive candidate, um, he's not on his desktop computer at work um, looking at your career site. He is... Uh, he is on his mobile while he's eating a tuna fish sandwich at lunch. And that's the really dirty little secret here is that those ultra-important passive candidates, um, you engage with them actually through mobile. And how can data help me? Last question that we got here, and if you got some more firemen, how can data be more efficient with mobile? Um, how can data help me be more efficient with mobile? Sorry. Um, that's a good one, and that's an easy one. It's just it gives you a way to think about the progress that you're making, right? So, um, and I think that's all we can ever ask, right? So uh, if we know that we're making progress towards, um, uh, towards a better world. So with that, what I'm going to do now is kind of give you guys what will happen next. So uh, you guys probably, if you've been on one of these before, you kind of know how this works. In the next 24 hours or so, you're going to get an email from us. Um, in that email, it's going to be a link to this recording. If you think there's other folks in the organization who might really want to listen in, um, you can forward that recording off and you can watch that offline. Uh, uh, I, as always, go to jive.com. Uh, I'll make a pitch for two things. One is we got this great white paper that's up there on winning the talent war. It's a strategic guide to how you're going to go ahead and 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 execute your talent acquisition strategies in the in today's environments. It's a really interesting and in-depth uh, perspective on talent acquisition. It's a really good read. Uh, as always, you can take out, check out the Jive.com experience and and see how good your mobile process is. Uh, check out the Jive blog. It's chock full of really good content up there to educate folks on this topic. Um, as always, thank. Thank you very much for attending, and I look forward to our next webcast. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.